Instead of, and this is what happened with yours, you, you gave it and it just kind of dead sticked yeah. and sat there until you gave the cut off. Mm -hmm. So see if you can put some oomph in it still at the end. Okay. Can we just play the last, um, uh, last four bars? <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Um, in the middle of the solo, I don't know if we necessarily meant to do this, but um, we started conducting at the 4-4. Yes. And as a soloist, like, I would um, maybe wait until the 3-4 mm -hmm. when it's just a held out note. Yeah. Because like, if you're doing the first half and you have mm -hmm. free game to do whatever you want, yeah. I would like the second half to maybe okay. do the same. Good. Yeah, Thank that, you. that's a good comment. So yeah. not just this piece, but a lot of pieces like that. If mm -hmm. there's like some cadenza, mm -hmm. uh, cough, cough, the tuba concerto that we're about to do in uh, <laughs> symphony, like there's moments where he's just going to take off, right? Mm -hmm. And if if Dr. or Professor Tyler started conducting somewhere halfway in that, that was not the next bar that we had written out yeah. for, that would confuse us, right? Yeah. So, so if you don't need to give the information, mm -hmm. it's less is more. So don't show what you don't need to. Which is okay. why I said the same thing about measure 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. You don't need to show those beats. It's just okay. a sustain. So, um, yeah, because that'll throw someone off. So it really, after the solo starts, guys, uh, come back in at the 3-4, like you said, because that's where a crescendo starts, and you can start showing that to the rest of us to come back in by 24. Okay? Uh, one more comment? Anybody? Car off. Car off. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you. Nice job, Kayla.